Okay, good morning, everyone. Today we have a practice of uh, graphical solution for a linear programming problem. So it's similar to the problem that we had in the last class. Okay, let me read it. And in class practice, a graphical approach for solving a linear programming problem. A Clark alum owns a fast food restaurant named LP Clark. He plans to start a new family meal uh, offer contain meal offer containing sandwiches and hash browns. He has to make a decision that how many sandwiches and hash browns to include the meal offer. Uh, his objective is to design a meal with the minimum cost. However, there are few requirements of the plan. So we already know the sandwich is $5, hash brown is $1 each. The meal should contain at least 1,000 calories. The meal should contain at least 60 grams of protein. Uh, the meal should not contain more than 80 grams fat. The meal should contain at least 100 grams of carbs. And if you look at the table, you can see the uh, basically nutrient uh, values of uh, uh, sandwich and hash brown, for example. Uh, in terms of calories, sandwich at uh, 300 calories, hash brown 200, protein 20 to 5, fat, uh, each sandwich contains 20 grams of fat uh, uh, versus hash brown that has 10 grams. For carbs, sandwich is 50 and hash brown is 30. So this meal plan has... In, uh, in order to offer, Clark has some policies in terms of how many calories, protein, and fat, and carbs it should have. So given that Alan wants to pass all of the requirements, he also wants to have the minimum possible cost. So, so we should prescribe a solution uh, for the alum to maximize his profit, which means minimizing the cost. I give you a few minutes, then I go to the solution. So let's answer the first question. Define decision variables. What you are deciding about. Yes, so you're deciding what ha how many signs uh, or hash brown the meal should have. So you are deciding about to, uh, to, uh, their number or quantity. So what is your objective function? Yes, correct. So for number three, I, I plotted for you. And we, we after plotting, we, uh, we answer the remaining questions. So since we already know our uh, objective function is the variable, just write some uh, four. So our so objective function is uh, finding, I mean, when the cost, so sandwich, S is sandwich, sandwich, and hash brown for. X for hash brown, and we know the cost coefficient is one. So we try to minimize this formula, and we don't know this is the objective function.
Uh, but what about our constants? The first answer is about uh, calories. It should be uh, at least 1,000 calories. So it's 1,000 and more. Uh, we already have the coefficient of uh, calories for this uh, sandwich and also hash brown. If I want to formulate it, Three hundred times ten plus two hundred times hash brown should be at least one point. So let's say if you end up saying you need a three sandwich one hash brown, three times two hundred nine hundred plus two two hundred should be more than one point. Okay, second constraint, you should be, it should have at least 60 grams of protein. So we only know coefficient of protein and protein for sandwich and hash brown. So The next is for fat, and uh, here I just saying that should not more than eight. It uh, should not have more than eight grams of fat. Yes, it should be less. So three times plus n times h less or equal h. And the last one. We should we should have at least one hundred grams of carb. So fifty and it doesn't make sense that negative hash brown and sandwiches. So we we already know H and S. Should be greater or equal. I don't have enough space, so I don't understand. So, as you might know in the previous class, constraint let me to make up uh, to find my feasible region, the region that is common with all the constraints. So, the, for the first one, I should uh, draw the line of 300 S plus 200 H equal to me. So equal 1000. Then I can't understand when it intersect my X, which is is S here and H axis, which Y, which is, I mean, it's our uh, Y, uh, X and Y for uh, axis. Okay, so if I make S zero, it should be five. If I make H zero, S will be 3.33. So one. Two, three, three point thirty three, and it should be five. So one, two, three, four. Hopefully, oh no. Okay, this is the line of 300S plus 200H equals 1000. So our constraint is more than 1000. 
do you think it would be the right side at this time or left side? Right side. If it's hard to imagine, you can just plug zero and zero. Zero and zero wouldn't be more than 1,000. So you can understand it should be in the right. Yeah, I think because of the next line, I cannot just put it there. So I should read the other line. I, I show you why. But anyway. Okay, for the next line. 20s plus 5h greater equal 60. So if I make s zero, it should be 12, something very up here. So let me just put three dots and then 12 here. Maybe even more. And if I make uh, h equals zero, s would be three. But let's put this on something like here. So it doesn't fit there. But anyway, so here we now intersect three. Uh, 12 down up there. And it's more than that. So if it's the line, uh, we know more than uh, 60 would be here. Having said that, we should uh, look at the uh, place that is common between these two constraints. So this part is not common. I can erase it. This part, this part would be common. Also, this part is not common between these two classes. Any uh, question why I'm looking for a common part? Yeah, feasibility. <clears throat> The third constraint is uh, 20s plus 10h, this will be for a. So I, sh I should look for equality first. 20s plus 10s equals 80. If I make uh, s0, it should be 10. If I make uh, h0, it should be 4. So I'm looking for here 4 in the bottom, maybe 18 here. It's still hard to draw, but
for this line, we are having less or equal 80. So should we look at the left side or right side? Left side, sorry. If you plug zero and zero, for sure it will be less than equal 80. So I should look for this one. If you take a look, this part is not common, this part is not common, this part is not common. This is the common part of it. It's a small, uh, yeah, four side shape. So, but still, we have another one. The last one is. Fifty S plus thirty S greater equal one hundred. So we should look for common part. So first, let me just this uncommon part. Looking more up here. So if I make it equality, if I put uh, H zero, S would be two. If I make S zero, it should be 3.33. So and two. Right or left? Right. Okay, so it seems it's not needed because the feasible region here, the right side of this overlap with the previous one, it should be the same. So this line is not contributing. So our feasible region still will be here. So let me just uh, make it down a lot double line. This is our common region, which is a feasible uh, region. Okay, so but what, what about our objective function? That is uh, S times one H. Uh, we are looking at minimization. So So if you look for 5s plus 1s equal 5, if you make s 0, it should be 5. If you make uh, h 0, s would be 1. So. This uh, dot, this hash one, is basically my objective function. And I just pick a random number here, five. So it could be something less, which your objective function shift to the left. If I make 10, 20, or more, your objective function line would shift to the right. 
So looking at this uh, figure, this may, may, I may or may not draw correctly. I, I mean, it's correct, but not in the right uh, proportions. But do you think in this physical region, the right side might have minimum answer or the left side of the physical region? Yeah, left. Because I should take my objective function to my physical region. Intuitively, on the left side, probably I have minimum answer than the right side. So you might need to check either this point, this point, maybe, or this point. Because they're on the left. So later on, uh, uh, when I introduce you how to solve this problem through uh, Excel or Lingo, those programs don't have don't have any capability to make a plot and find the line. So I also this is just two dimension. You just have two decision variables. Let's say if you have ten, so it just makes everything much harder. What they do? They just look over physical region and find all of these uh, intersections and just check them. They don't uh, shift the objective function to the left and right. They just, just check these four points, this one, this one, this one, and this one. This point is four and zero. This point. And can you see if there is a mathematic proof for that? But we don't go to that proof. Just keep in mind, your optimal solution would be on uh, these points of feasible region. This one with 3.33 and zero. This one, 2.8 and eight. And this one, two and three. And I just uh, don't solve it, but basically, if you want to find this intersection, you just intersect these two lines. So you intersect. So this one is obvious. For this one, you should check these two constraints and intersect each other. Same for this one. And this one is an easy one. So you intersect the constraints that make your feasible region and find the intersections. And based on mathematical proof, or how your software saw, you just check these points and to see which one minimize or maximize or basically optimize your uh, objective function. Uh, questions so far? Do you guys want me to solve maybe how to find two or four? Or it makes sense? Makes sense. Uh, if you want, I can uh, just intersect two intersection, two lines and show you how I found two and four. Okay, okay let's just check them, check one by one to see which one uh, optimized my objective function.
just for your reference, I put how I found two and four. You just intersect these two constraints, and you find that that point is just intersection of these two. I have one two and four, but my objective function, which is, uh, I think it's five s zero plus one h, five s plus one h. So the first one is fourteen, second one fourteen point eight, third one sixteen point sixty five. And the last one is 20. So based on uh, what I wrote on the board, what is my objective function? So what is, sorry, my optimal solution? Which one? Well, uh, y1. Yeah, if we minimize uh, the objective function, and this is a minimization problem. That they have the lowest possible amount. Questions so far? So, the optimal solution for the meal, uh, which uh, uh, basically follow all the constraints, is having two sandwiches, four hash brown, and the cost would be fourteen dollars. The answer number four and five. I'll give you a few minutes. Yes. Um, in this kind of problem, would we even consider a decimal, like on an exam or something? You know, like yeah, you know, very good. Uh, very good answer. She's she's saying that there's no makes doesn't make sense have to have two point eight sandwiches or two point thirty three sandwiches. Yes, this is not uh, practical, but you know this is another chapter talking about integer answer. Here we just start talking about this thing, but you are right. It's not practical, but it's mathematically is correct. Okay. Yeah, very good question. So integer program is a just in, very independent chapter of linear program. But here we are lucky because the minimal answer has int uh, integer solution. So we don't have to solve it through integer programs. Yes? I think, let me check my mail. I think I had a type, so that, yeah, I forgot to put point, point here. It's not A, it's point A. So, I found it. Let me just. Zero point eight, yeah, or point eight. So let me find which, which, uh, which one was that? Um, this
Okay, you intersect uh, 300s plus 200h equal 1000 with 20s plus 5h equal 60, and you find the answer. So there is some certain limitation of using this method, although uh, very intuitive, but uh, first of all, you might, like me, have some issues of drawing something with the right proportion. On top of that, here we just have two decision variables. But still, we can use uh, a piece of paper to do that. But when you have more decision variables, it just gets harder and harder. So from now, we start learning uh, some softwares that let us to do linear programming much easier. The most important part with the software is just we should be able to write your constraint and objective function. If you are be able to make them, you just plug them in the software and you get the answers. Okay, these are due dates, uh, coming due dates, uh, assignment 11, 12. I posted assignment 13, uh, which uh, you might have another class to learn how to do that. And also just keep in mind uh, the due date is coming. And for the final project, this is the, more imp the most important one. And uh, in the last week, we also have a project presentation. So today uh, uh, we, uh, we learned Marcus of Excel solver, which uh, utilized the simplex method for solving such prescriptive analytics problem. And also we look, we look over some uh, jargons of uh, linear programming in case you need to analyze your Resp uh, your solutions, you need to know those jargons. Okay, first, uh, uh, you need to uh, make uh, Excel solver available on your system. So I put the shortcuts here, but let me just show it to you. So you guys open Microsoft Excel. Open one page, go to File and Options, File Options. So on File Menu, Options is the last one. Yeah. yeah. Click on the Options and almost on the left side, one of the bottoms, there's add-ins. Click on add-ins. So when you click on add-ins, you see a list of uh, available add-ins, but we are looking for Excel add-ins. So on the right pane, at the bottom, there is a section manage. Uh, here, 
usually default Excel add-ins. Because if it's default, it just lets this one to be as it is, and then select Go. Click on Go button, and you see a list of available Excel uh, Excel sorry add-ins, and just select Solver add -in. and click OK. And if you go to the data, you might see a, a solver uh, on the most far right side. If it's not available, just close your Excel and open it again. But usually it should be happened when you select uh, the solver. <laughs> Pardon me? No, just solver is enough. No. Okay, so so now uh, we are going to have this uh, uh, problem uh, uh, here, and we uh, we are going to have it just solve it through Excel. So the way that you solve it, you should make uh, some formulation to just replicate the relationship that you you see here. One relationship is for objective function, which is you should say uh, you should make a formula to for finding your objective function. Also, you need to write like four or five other formulas for your constraints. Well, you we, will see how to do that. So, go to. I give you a few minutes. Go to your model week 12 and download in class solutions. And then pick problem one. I give you one or two minutes for all of you to log in to your account and then download it. Okay, so the yellow cells here refers to my decision variables. I'm not sure what would be my decision variable, but based on the yellow cells that refer to my decision variable, I can find the value of my constraint and objective function. Objective function is very straightforward because if you look at on the yellow uh, rectangle on the uh, right side, 5s times 1h would be your objective function. If you click on the red cell, you see the formula. So five times uh, C5 plus one times E5 would be my objective function. So basically, what if you find your objective function, which is on this yellow cells, you can find your objective function which is uh, in the red cell. 
So if you click on the red cell, you can see the formula of objective function. Five times C5, sorry, uh, uh, five times C4 plus one times D4. Also, based on my decision variable, I can find the value of each constraint. So if you press on, uh, I click on the first blue cell on E7, you can see the value of the constraint would be your first decision variable times 300 plus second decision variable times 200. So this, uh, based on the decision variable that you will find, the value would be different here. So let me just put it, just throw two numbers. Let's say one and two. So one and two change my objective function is seven. Look at the first constraint. So one times 300 plus two times 200. So it's 700. So does it satisfy my first constraint? No. So one and two is not correct. But also you can see the effect of the decision variable on each constraint too. So except for the constant three and four, the remaining two are not satisfied. Let me delete them. If I delete them, everything is zero. Similarly, you, you, uh, you make the formula for the protein constraint for carbs and, also, and fat. So, so far, we just formulate all the constraints and objective function. Now we should let Excel knows what we mean from here. So we tell, we introduce these formulations to Excel through uh, solver. So click on data then select solver. So first of all, in front of set objective, I put E5. So it would be empty. You just click on E5, the red cell, and it will pop up here. See? And as you see, I'm just saying that this is my objective function cell. Formula of objective cell is in that. So the formula of objective function is in that cell. I'm just saying that this is a minimization problem. Okay. So then I should also introduce um, my constraints. So the way that you write it, you just uh, click add and the cell reference would be the cell that you wrote the formula, greater or equal, and the constraint is whatever on the right side of your each constraint, for example, one. For here, I select 1,000 more. And here, I select this blue cell, which has the formula. This is how I made them. Then you click on Add, and you just add the constraints here. So if you look at uh, this one, sorry, this one, E7 get an equal F7. E7 is for calories and uh, more than F7. So we just said the blue cell, which is E7, uh, the value comes from the decision variable that we find. Uh, it should be more than equal F7, which is 1000. Same for the next one, E8 and F8. For E9 and F9, we are looking for less or equal problem. And again, for E1 and, sorry, E10 and F10, we're just saying that whatever comes from the formula and the blue cell should be greater than equal F10, which is 100. Also, the most important one, we just should also say 
where is my decision variable? Here, let me just delete it. You just click here and just select these two. These two has the value of your decision variables. So as you see, I'm telling the cell that has my objective function. I identify type of my objective function. I'm telling where is my decision variables. And also I introduced the formulations of all the constraints that I have. This is a non-negativity problem. So it doesn't make sense to have a sand negative or minus sandwich and hash browns. So here I'm just selecting uh, make on constraint uh, variables non-negative. Just whatever I do identify, just consider as non-negative. It is non-negativity condition here. And we are using simplex method. You click solve. So you can press OK, or also you can go over details. To see the details, just click Control and select all the possible reports. And finally, click OK. So as you look at the yellow cells and the red cell, so two hash brown, uh, two sandwich, four hash brown, Answer is 14, this is the minimum cost. If you found through graphical uh, or uh, by plotting, uh, you also can see the value of your constraint. For example, the first constraint would be 1400, more than 1000. The second is 60, which is at least 60. Second is 80. Last one is 20, 20 which is more than 100. So we satisfy all the constraints because the value that uh, the blue cells are associated formula uh, it just uh, follow all the constraints that I have. Okay, uh, questions so far? Okay, now let's look at the reports. The first one is not that much productive, just basically just shows you the final answer. Look at the sensitivity report. It just say, uh, look at the decision variable S. It said the final value is two, reduced cost is zero, coefficient is five. Uh, we talk about uh, reduced cost later on. It just said allowable increase is infinity. So you, you can increase whatever you want. And allowable decrease is one. Again, no worries. If you wait like a few, a few minutes, I just show what do they mean. In next table, you also just talks about the constraints you have. Carbs, calories, protein, and fat. It tells you the final value. Shadow price, right? HR, RS stands for right hand side, allowable increase and allowable decrease. And also, the last one talks about Slack. But let's see what do they mean. So, you need to know the jargon of this uh, method or this uh, domain to be able to understand what does the Slack mean, what does allowable increase, decrease. Right hand side makes sense. I mean, it's more straightforward. Shadow press on so. Having said that, uh, from um, your model, download more concepts. This is a document file.
Okay, so let's say we have a feasible region of, which is made of just these three constraints, and the optimal solution is on the right side in this point. On this point, right hand side of your constraint and left hand side are exactly the same. If I get back to your sol solution, just did it this one. As you see here, for these two constraints, the right and left side is exactly the same. But for these two, it seems you oversatisfy your constraints. So these two basically is the, they are the line that uh, make your optimal solution. Which is this two points equal sixteen and equal. 80. This, this was your optimal solution. So, in this point, you just uh, consume all the constraints. Uh, sorry, the left hand. This, that, that's actually uh, has the same meaning, but I think you should say right and left side are the same. For the look at the <clears throat> pair per constraint. The optimal solution is on the right side. So instead of exactly consuming on the constraint or having at least equal the constraint, you have basically you have something more than that. These two are kind of similar. In these two cases, you provide more calories and you provided more carbs. So the optimal solution is not cons uh, intersection of number one and number four cons constraint. It's basically just intersection of number 20. So what we call it, we call them binding constraint. So I just uh, make it red and pull it. So in binding constraint, you have the optimal solution and right and left side are exactly the same. And the slack or surplus is the same. In Excel, we don't have any surplus. Everything they call it the slack. But later when we look at lingo, I show you the difference between slack and surplus. But anyway, so if you look at here, what that two co binding constraint, it's like zero for not binding. It's like it's not zero. So basically, when you have greater or equal, usually almost in all the softwares, if your right uh, left hand side is more than right hand side, they call it surplus. This is for greater than equal sign. If it's less than equal sign, and your right side and left side are not equal, the differences would be slack. But again, in Excel, it, it then Excel doesn't differentiate these two. All the differences between right and left side is called slack in Excel. Shadow price, change in the objective value when a resource or a constraint is relaxed, increased by one unit, keeping other things con constant. So having said that, let's find one of the shadow prices. So the, look at the protein, shadow price is point Three. Let me check the definition. If you change the constraint, it changes your um, objective value. So having said that, let's try it. So again, um, for protein, uh, shadow price is 0.3. So instead of 60, I make it 61. Let's solve it again, see what happens. Solve, solve, 
say I don't uh, get reports, press OK. Look, it changed uh, 0.3. Now it's 14.3. Solid again. So I hope you now you understand the, the meaning of shadow part. It just tell you what does it, uh, how how it change the objective value if you change one of the constraints. Here we, uh, we change protein by one unit and it change the objective function. It add 0.3 to the objective function. You can do same for fat and change the constraint and see what happens to the objective function. Uh, questions so far? The next concept is allowable increase or decrease. Maximum change from the current coefficient that keep optimal solution. So, it seems if you, for the sandwich, if uh, it change one, you make it one uh, one dollar cheaper. It doesn't change your objective, uh, your optimal solution. It change your objective function because the cost comes from the coefficients of sandwich and hash brown. It just say it doesn't change ob objective function. It means that number of sandwich and hash brown would be same. And if they increase infinitely, is it, you still uh, have to make two sandwiches. So if you change it, if you if they uh, you find a sandwich is two dollars cheap, the number of sandwich and hash brown or objective function would change because allowable decrease is one, it's not two. Same for hash brown, global decrease infinitely. Here it doesn't make sense, actually. Uh, make, just saying you can make it very, very cheap. Uh, but you cannot make it like negative value. So it should be greater or equal to zero. And also the global increase is to, uh, 0.25. So if you change it more than 2.25, your, uh, uh, your objective value or decision value the decision values would be different. And also you can see the same allowable increase decrease for your constraints and the interpretation is the same. How much you can change your constraints uh, why you won't affect your uh, uh, optimal solution or decision values. Reduce cost, the amount by which an objective function coefficient would have to improve to be included in the solution. So here we have we are using both sandwich and hash brown, so both of them are included. Then if I check my reduce cost is zero. Because both of them are included. But let's say you have four or five decision variables. If some of them are not included, you have a reduced cost here. But here, if they are already involved in the final solution, the reduced cost would be zero, which is here. So in uh, other examples, you would see some uh, decision variables that their value is not zero. So this one makes more sense. So these are, I mean, please uh, do practice. I think this is the first time you see such a concept and jargon. So your final exam would have a lot of this. So I would say, what happens if you change this and that? Uh, uh, like how you, you should, uh, you, you, you could have another decision variable into your optimal solution. So this page would definitely would be your final exam. Because understand this page helps you to interpret the results. We don't just look at uh, decision variable and uh, objective function, we also need wants to uh, interpret. 
because those interpretation helps you to make a, a strategic decisions. For example, uh, how to change your constraints or how to change your policies, which affect your constraints. And at the end, they would affect your optimal solution or objective function. Questions so far? Okay, so I think we don't have time to go for the next problem, but please uh, read it. So this is about uh, a manufacturing problem, make versus uh, buy decision. So you want to decide either do you want to make an item or just outsource and buy from other resources. And Last one is transportation problem, which your homework comes from this problem. So the way that I teach this part of the course, I show you several problems. Uh, your final uh, pro final exam would be basically an extension of one of these problems. If you look at on model, I'm just showing you the last year final example, say last semester. This is a, and look at this figure. This is a transportation problem. If you look at here, it seems that I just use this problem. Maybe I add more parts and made the final, uh, made it as your final prop, final exam problem. So basically, you, you, you learn this course by just going through different types of problems. So first one uh, was like uh, the alumni problem. Next one, buy, uh, make versus buy. And also the, at the end of the next class, we all look at the first transportation problem. And more interestingly, if you look at them, you know, I, I'm asking some questions. These are basically uh, by looking at the report. Uh, 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 my question here comes from um, uh, the idea of, uh, I mean, comes from checking your knowledge from how to interpreting a prescriptive antics report. Yeah, I don't think we have time for the next problem. But next class, we review these two problems, make versus buy and transportation. So let's have your attendance for now. So stop sharing.